Supply chains are the complex and dynamic backbone of every company. They are systems within an organisation that include resources, information, processes and people that are involved in procuring goods from supplier, operating them and delivering them to the end user. Sustainability as a role in marketing and management has become more important in the recent years. As companies become more aware about the dwindling resources of the earth, they are trying to do more to reduce their own carbon footprints, mainly through their business operations. A sustainable supply chain works the exact same way as a normal supply chain. However, they are more focused on the environmental, social and economic factors and integrating them with the business processes to meet corporate missions. Basically aligning green marketing, i.e. integration of environmental issues with strategic marketing processes within the supply chain to meet organisational goals. The article, Aligning the Sustainable Supply Chain to Green Marketing Needs, a case study, focuses heavily on a university catering service that went from having an ordinary standard in regards to where the food came from, how it was delivered, and what was happening behind the scenes, to a fully sustainable catering service that has won many awards in the area of sustainability due to the changes it has made. We have found that the five major areas that have helped make this catering service so successful are the following. Integrating Sustainable Supply Chain Management, SSCM, with Market Function, Market Alignment, Demand Management, Information Exchange, and lastly, Relationships and Networks. Integrating SSCM with Market Function. As stated in the introduction, the Sustainable Supply Chain is a supply chain where the focus is developed around the environment as well as the risk and waste costs that the chain may encounter. Whilst it was seen that major efforts were being made to increase the sustainability of the products, there was only a small number of stakeholders and customers who knew that such changes were occurring. In order to get the word out to customers about the sustainable approach, notice boards and menus were updated to incorporate the information about the changes to the supply chain. The changes to the food itself and as well as introducing the use of a local special. In addition to these changes, promotional vouchers were handed out to inform consumers about some of the previously mentioned changes, as well as being able to help control the demand. From these changes, the business saw an increase in the number of customers. Market alignment. When it comes to making the ESC greener, there are a number of needs that must be considered. The first is cost factor. Green products aren't exactly cheap. And a university market, this makes things very hard as students aren't exactly the richest people. This is known as cost versus green trade-off. In order to compensate for this, different supply chains need to be used in order to get different products. Examples of these include locally sourced fish, obtaining mass market products from a national wholesaler, etc. Demand management. Producers are sensitive to demand early on in production, but a delivery point, but at delivery point, products may be pushed onto the market based on availability. Buyers can help manage demand by exchanging information by affecting menu planning and price incentives. This is adopting an influence strategy. Lean and efficient supply chain involve creating a supply base out of multiple wholesalers capable of meeting sustainable objectives. They are typically used when supply is predictable in high volumes but low variety. Then through small regular deliveries, the supply chain is able to minimise waste. Local and seasonal is a marketing pool strategy that gives more opportunity to small, flexible suppliers. The risks involved with this strategy is upstream, is upstream in availability, supply failure, information transparency and obsolete inventory. However, these risks can be com combated by regular personalised information exchange, postponement strategies, Cooperative menu designs and upstream source management like buy to order information exchange. Information exchange is the act of giving and receiving information. Businesses look for suppliers who can provide plenty of information to where the product comes from and how it got to where it is. Tags are a good example of a way to exchange information. Tags on suppliers gave more information on each specific product. This was a hands-off method and increases and increased efficiency. The information flow was also seen to be ma mainly downstream. In the article, they talk about the supply of fish. Fish supply involves three conversations. The initial conversation where the chef tells the supplier about 
and upcoming event. Secondly, further discussions about possible options. And finally, the last conversation on the product, the exact number required and the price. A buy to order service reduces waste and increases responsiveness. The exchange of information with suppliers is often regarded as a technological challenge rather than one of inter-organisational relationships, relationships and networks. Building relationships and networks with suppliers is a crucial aspect of supply chain management. Businesses that have good relations with their suppliers will usually get a better deal than their competitors and will also have more access to more products from the supplier. Suppliers are less likely to develop sustainable practices because of constraints such as time and a seasonal relationship with the university. This creates a great need for developing these positive relationships which can provide more win-win situations for both the supplier and the business. By analysing the article, we clearly see that emphasis is given to integrating uh, green marketing and su sustainable supply chain. We can easily understand the concept of supply chain by the value chain given by Michael Porter. The traditional value chain consisted of the competencies that a business has, procurement of raw materials and using different channels so that the product reaches to the customers. Porter's value chain includes a set of primary and support activities in order to provide goods to customers. There are five primary activities that include inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and lastly, service. The support activities are the backbone of primary activities. It is because of them that the primary activities take place. There are four support activities that include the firm's infrastructure, technology, human resource management, and procurement. Hence, we can analyze the model provided in our article by Porter's value chain. The market influences will let us know the demand for our product, in our case, catering, with this demand, we will be able to focus on our primary and support activities. If it is an external market influence where due to some unavoidable scenario, the firm has to change its processes or changes in the product, here the food department might plan to sell green products to which it will have to procure a similar sustainable raw material from the supplier and provide it to the customer. These products are new in the market and customers don't have enough knowledge about them. So these products need to be pushed to the customers by aggressive marketing and advertisement and letting them know the advantages of the product. This is a proactive approach where proper planning and communication takes place between the supplier and the firm before selling the product. Assuming that there, are, there is a market change in the demand and the customers are now aware about the product and so they actively look for the sustainable products. The findings that we found out from the article, we can link it with the second theory that is uh, given by Porter, that is the Porter's generic strategy. Uh, so basically there are three strategies, cost leadership strategy which focuses on reduction of uh, prices of the products. Uh, the second strategy is the differentiation strategy by focusing on dif differentiating product attributes and features. The third strategy is the focus strategy. Uh, this is a strategy which is uh, used in a niche market. Um, than the other, the other which is used for a broader market perspective. And it states that either focus on cost leadership or differentiation, assuming that the products would be sustainable in nature, or for example, organic food, the focus might be on product differentiation as people who buy green products do not hesitate in spending an extra dollar. So focusing on leading by reducing cost wouldn't be a practical move. So offering customers new and innovative food items that are not currently in the market is more practical approach.